They told us to wait for the Fury, they told us to wait for Vega, then they told us to wait for Na'Vi. AMD fans are a hopeful bunch, never giving up on the dream of seeing AMD competing in the PC market shoulder to shoulder with Nvidia again. If you missed my video from last week, I did a deep dive on AMD's new RDNA architecture versus Nvidia's Turing architecture, and I highly recommend you watch that to understand some of the more technical details of what underpins these GPUs from an instruction set that point of view as well as from a hardware point of view. In the intro for that video, I also said that AMD would have no choice but to drop the prices of the 5700 NXT shortly after launch. And guess what? They didn't even wait for that as the cards are launching at a discount. We'll talk about what that means after the benchmarks. So AMD sent me review samples of the 5700 NXT as well as the new Ryzen processors and there should be a video on the channel with that review as well. So today we'll look at how these new Radeon GPUs perform and if the price drops are enough for me to recommend them. Taking the XT out of its rather nice box reveals its full bendiness. Honestly, when I saw the GPU online in videos and pictures, I thought it looked kind of silly, but in person, it looks really silly. I could see what AMD was going for, as from some angles, it does kind of remind me of an 80s sports car. But I hope this was a design experiment that AMD won't repeat. The 5700, on the other hand, I don't know about you, but I think this thing looks gorgeous. I I wish the logo lit up like the one on the XT, but other than that, it's a beauty. Both GPUs come with one HDMI 2.0 port and three DisplayPort 1.4 DSC. What that means is that with one cable, you can get 4K at 144Hz with FreeSync and HDR, if you connect it to a monitor that supports those features, obviously. And this actually might make more sense than you think, as you'll see when we get to the benchmarks in a second. Most of you have probably already seen the specs, but I'll list them on screen nonetheless. One thing to note is that the GPUs are quite heavy, so be advised if you are planning on using them with some of the cheaper motherboards that don't have reinforced PCIe slots. Now on to the benchmarks, and I'm going to use my GTX 1080 Ti as a baseline comparison, as that's the highest end GPU I own, but I will add some aggregate results from other sources to give us an idea of how these new Radeons stack up against the competition, as well as other older AMD GPUs. My testing was done with a Ryzen 9 3900X, 16 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z Royal at 3600 MHz CL16, and all the games are stored in a PCIe Gen 4 M.2 drive from Gigabyte. Starting with Metro Exodus at 1440p, the XT average at a very impressive 83 frames per second, basically on par with the 1080 Ti and with higher 1% lows, and it also beat the competing 2070 Super. The 5700 was well ahead of the 2060 Super at 74 frames per second average. However, when we look at 4K, we see something a bit peculiar. The XT only manages 33 FPS average, which is very close to the 5700 at 31 FPS average. I repeated this test several times to be sure, and there seems to be some sort of limitation here for the XT, as it should be performing better than the 5700 at least. So a strange start for the Navi cards, with the 5700 and XT performing incredibly well at 1440p in Metro, but falling short in 4K. Now you might say that these are not 4K capable GPUs, but the next benchmark seems to disagree with that assessment. In PUBG, at 1440p max settings, the XT gets 98 FPS average, again very close to my 1080 Ti, and the 5700 performs great at 80 FPS average, considering this is ultra settings. I scoured the internet for PUBG benchmarks with the super GPUs, but couldn't find any for us to compare against. At 4K, the 5700 XT falls a bit short of the 1080 Ti at 50 FPS average versus 55, not really something you'd notice, especially as the 1% lows are the same. The 5700 drops down to 41 FPS average here. Now this is 4K Ultra settings, which doesn't really make much sense for anyone to play PUBG yet, so I wanted to try high settings and see how the XT would perform, mostly because the 4K resolution does make a lot of sense for PUBG, as it really helps you see enemies at far distances, which will give you an edge. So dropping down to the high settings preset sees the XT 
HD averaging at a nice and smooth 65 FPS, never dropping below 52. So if you play Battle Royale games where spotting distant enemies is crucial, the XT performs surprisingly well at 4K. Now Apex Legends is an interesting game to benchmark because it's one of the few games that is constantly getting its performance improved. It runs on the Source 2 engine, which is the same that CSGO uses, so you'd expect the most optimized PC game engine to be a good showcase for the AMD GPUs, and Apex doesn't disappoint. At 1440p, the 5700 XT beats the 1080 Ti at 112 FPS average versus 105 on the Ti. The 5700 performs well also at 93 FPS average at max settings. The same reasoning from PUBG applies here. Higher resolutions make it easier to spot enemies at a distance. So looking at the 4K results, we see really good performance from the Navi GPUs, with the 1080 Ti now regaining the lead thanks to its 11 gigs of video memory, as opposed to the 8 gigs on the AMD GPUs. Still, 67 FPS average from the XT and 61 average from the 5700 do make this a perfectly playable experience at 4K. And as with any competitive shooter, most people would turn many of the more taxing settings down. We continue with Battle Royale games, now with Fortnite. AMD GPUs typically don't do that great in this game compared to Nvidia. I mean, they play the game fine, just with lower FPS averages. And that continues to be the case with the 5700 and XT. The 2070 Super beats the XT at 1440p max settings, with a 109 FPS average versus 97 FPS average on the XT. It's not a huge beating, but it is a win for Nvidia here. Notice that the 1% lows on the XT are very close to the average, and I did notice the game being very consistent with this GPU, while with the 1080 Ti there were fluctuations due to that gap from its 1% lows to its average. The 2060 Super is about 10 FPS faster than the 5700, which also has those consistent frame times despite being the slowest of the bunch here. At 4K, the 1080 Ti shows that 2017 was a great year for GPUs, as it maintains its leadership versus the incumbents. The 2070 Super beats the 5700 XT by only 4 FPS, while the 5700 loses to the 2060 Super by a tiny margin also. The 5700 did exhibit some stuttering at this resolution, but nothing that you can fix by turning down some settings. We move away from Battle Royale games and into racing with Forza Horizon 4. Forza is a good indicator of something that I talked about in my video from last week. It's a game that makes heavy use of modern programming techniques and really takes advantage of async compute. As a result, the Radeon 7 is unbeatable in this game, not even the 2080 Ti beats it. But what about the Navi GPUs? Are they prepared for the future? At 1440p at max settings, the 2070 Super comes out ahead of the 5700 XT by over 10 FPS. The XT at 85 FPS average is tied with the 2060 Super, while the 5700 still manages very smooth gameplay at 75 FPS average, never dropping below 60. You can see how the old guard struggles with 1% lows of the 1080 Ti. At 4K, things look pretty bad for AMD as the Nvidia GPUs accelerate to the top, with the 5700 XT eating dust at only 53 FPS average, while the 5700, out of gas, comes last in this race for the worst car-related puns ever seen in a GPU review video. Now, before you AMD fans get too upset, let's move to a game that typically favors AMD hardware. World War Z was used to showcase the Navi GPUs during the announcements, and there's good reason why. At 1440p, the 5700 XT comes out on top at 122 FPS average, beating the 2070 Super by 7%. The 5700 performs a bit worse than the 2060 Super at 90 FPS average versus 95 FPS on the Super. At 4K, we have what you could call an outlier, as the 5700 XT gets 110 FPS average, well above the rest of the pack, with the 2070 Super at 63 FPS average, and the 5700 at 50 FPS average, just shy of the 2060 Super. It's a strange result, but one that was repeatable, and this was in DX11, not Vulcan, where we've come to expect weirdness sometimes. 
And our last gaming benchmark is Battlefield 1, an older title but one that I still play. Unfortunately, it's played with hackers nowadays, but anyway, again I couldn't find any sources that had tested this game with the super cards, so they are not represented. At 1440p, the 5700 XT runs at 129 FPS average, and the 5700 at 118 FPS average manages to beat the 1080 Ti, which is quite impressive. This was at DX11 at max settings. At 4K, the 5700 XT gets 79 FPS average with everything maxed out. Again, very impressive for the Navi GPUs, with the 5700 again beating the 1080 Ti with 70 FPS average. However, the 1% lows drop all the way down to 50 FPS, and these drops were very noticeable during my testing. Still, very impressive 4K performance considering the price range of these GPUs use. So, a few things stand out to me from these benchmarks. Firstly, the 5700 XT and the 2070 Super trade places very often in games that favor AMD, the XT leads by a good margin. And the same is true in Nvidia favored games for the 2070 Super. AMD is promoting the 5700 XT as a 1440p GPU, but based on my testing, the XT is actually a 4K60 card at high settings. It will play okay at ultra settings in some games, but in many instances you'll be hard pressed to notice the difference between high and ultra anyway. The XT is a very solid entry point into 4K PC gaming, particularly for those looking for value. The 2070 Super might perform better in some games, but it costs $500, while the 5700 XT at 399 is basically a 1080 Ti replacement with a few extras and an affordable price. I would have liked to see the XT with a bit more VRAM to really make the case for a 4K budget card, which is something we don't really have in the market right now. Feels like it's a missed opportunity by AMD. The 5700 at $349 is a great option for a mid-range build, but I think you'd be wise to spend the extra $50 that the XT costs. There are several games where the 5700 loses to the 2060 Super by a small margin, but it does cost $50 less, so if you have a very type budget, the 5700 is a good option for 1440p. Unfortunately, I only got access to the drivers with the overclocking features fully working about a day before this review goes up, so I didn't have enough time to experiment. I was hoping to be able to push the 5700 to XT levels, but the core frequency is capped at 1850 MHz, which the GPU reaches without issues. That leads me to believe that this is a hard lock put in place by AMD, so maybe there's some limitation here. With the core maxed out and the memory pushed to 9 110 megahertz, there was a slight increase in performance, but nothing groundbreaking. In superposition, with the 4K optimized preset, the 5700 went from 6,188 points to 6,329 points, but in actual games there didn't seem to be much of an impact, with Forza, for instance, going from 46 FPS average at 4K stock to 48 FPS average overclocked. So just an extra 2 frames per second. With the XT, the overclock did yield slightly better results, with superposition going from 6,991 points stock at the 4K optimized run to 7,407 points overclocked. The overclock consisted of pushing the memory to 910 MHz and the core to 2100 MHz, which is a pretty impressive overclock. However, in gaming, the difference was barely noticeable. For instance, in World War Z, at 4K, the XT went from 110 average FPS to 114 average, but the minimums did see a 10 FPS increase, which is interesting to observe. Overall, the 5700 in XT seemed like relatively poor overclockers, but to be honest, I didn't have much time to play around with the latest version of Radeon settings. One thing I did notice was that the 5700 runs pretty cool even when you push it. You can adjust the fans to lower temperature and while the XT sounds like a jet plane when you overclock it, the 5700 manages to stay within reasonable sound levels even when you push it hard. 
we're getting to a situation in the GPU market where there are so many options and the performance is so similar between AMD and Nvidia, with the exception of the 2080 Ti, at least until more Navi cards come out, that extra features are becoming more relevant as a deciding factor when choosing a GPU for gaming. While Nvidia offers ray tracing, very few games make use of it, and the ones that do perform horribly. There's also DLSS if you want to make your games extra blurry. With Navi, AMD is also bringing extra features to try and upsell these GPUs to us. Are they any good? There's contrast adaptive sharpening, which will have to be implemented by developers, so it's a bit like ray tracing in the RTX launch. It's a new feature that has no practical applications at the time of launch. There's also anti-lag, which I did test and honestly I couldn't feel any difference with it turned on. It's supposed to reduce latency and therefore make competitive games in particular feel more responsive, but apart from maybe a placebo effect, I honestly couldn't tell the difference. And lastly, there's Radeon Image Sharpening, not to be confused with the other contrast sharpening feature. This one can be activated in any game. You just go into Radeon Settings and turn it on. AMD recommends that you also turn on Image Scaling, so what this does is it automatically scales the image from a lower resolution to your screen's native resolution and then applies sharpening to make it look native. So there's one problem that immediately sticks out, and that's that this setting is a toggle rather than a slider, at least in the pre-launch version of Radeon settings that media got access to. That means you can't control how much sharpness you are adding to a game. That's something I would like to see in a future version of Radeon settings. So I've recorded four different versions of the same scene here in Metro Exodus. On the far left, you have regular 1440p with no sharpening and no scaling. Right of that is just sharpening, then right of that is sharpening with scaling, and in the far right is 4K native. Now YouTube will compress the video, but maybe you'll be able to make the differences out. You can download the uncompressed footage from Cortex.tech. The scaled and sharpened image looks less muddy, and in my 32 inch 4K monitor it was serviceable as far as an upscaled image is concerned. It's a very subtle effect, but it is there. Now does it look as good as native 4K? No, it lacks that crispness and the level of detail just isn't the same. But it does what it's supposed to do, it doesn't affect performance and it doesn't degrade the image quality. I wrote an article for PC Gamer that shows how you can achieve similar effects using any GPU, including Nvidia's, and I will link to it in the description. I do like the way this is implemented, it's very easy to experiment with, and I'm interested to see what other effects AMD will add to Radeon settings in the future. Something like an ENB would be really cool to see. So even though I think the 5700 and XD at these new price points are actually a pretty good deal at $350 and $400 respectively, I have to say that AMD and Nvidia's behavior in the PC market really needs to change. Consumers aren't stupid, or at least enthusiasts aren't, and this is in 2010. Enthusiasts and consumers in general nowadays have access to a torrent of information on any product they might be considering buying, and with social media and and particularly YouTube, reviewers have more influence and reach than ever before. I understand that AMD has promised investors that the company would increase margins, but playing around with pricing like this sends out the message to consumers that AMD is seeing what Nvidia's pricing strategy will be so that they can then milk consumers as much as possible. So I have to ask AMD, you really think consumers don't see through this? You could argue that this is a sign that we now have competition in the market, with AMD being forced to lower prices to compete. That seems to be a fitting narrative. Competition is great, right? We all win. Yeah, it is. But the problem here is that AMD are not lowering the prices to below what the cards should cost, which is what competition would promote. They are lowering the prices to what they should have cost to begin with. Why announce the prices so high only to have to backtrack and now look greedy? Nvidia's reputation has been tarnished in the last year with the RT 
FTX launch because they thought this was 2007 and the media wouldn't expose the absolute robbery that their launch prices were. But we did, and consumers listen. And as much as AMD might want to spin this as competition making them lower prices, truth is, enthusiasts will see this for what it really is. AMD trying to see what they can get away with to please investors. These big corporations are really failing to understand how the new media works and how it affects consumer choices. And this was just another example. At the end of the day, I'm obviously happy to see the price drops, as that will benefit us enthusiasts. There are now a ton of options in the mid-range segment, so the question becomes, should you buy the 5700 or the XT, or should you buy the 2060 Super or the 2070 Super? When I first saw the Navi announcements, I didn't really care much for the 5700 XT, but after testing it, I'm really impressed with how it performs, especially at 4K. If you are someone who likes to tweak games to get the most performance without sacrificing too much image quality, the 5700 XT is much more than just a 1440p GPU. It's your entry point to 4K gaming at 60Hz. Pair the XT with a FreeSync monitor and you can enjoy that 4K crispiness for an affordable package of GPU plus monitor. I was expecting to be raving about the 5700 and mostly ignoring the XT, but it ends up being the other way around. The 5700 is a good choice for 1440p gaming, don't get me wrong, but it's not exactly exciting. At $350, you get guaranteed 1440p performance, and you get to dip your toes into 4K gaming in some of the less demanding titles, but I would spend the extra $50 and get the XT instead, as it offers a lot more performance for the price. Think about it, pay $350 for a car that's only really going to do 1440p well, or spend an extra $50 and jump to 4K60. If only we could swap the shrouds though. There will be more benchmarks added to Cortex.tech, so be sure to join the forums if you want to see those. There's also another video on the channel with the Ryzen 3700X and 3900X reviews, so be sure to check that video out also. Consider joining my Patreon for just $1 per month, and like all my awesome patrons, you'll get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server, where you can ask me anything you want to know about the Navi GPUs and the Ryzen processors. Thanks for watching, and until the next one. Thank you.